Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Ain't no thing like me, Seth Lee. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. Matt's coming. No. When do we start? Welcome back to the show, the show where we talk comics, TV, movies, pop culture news, review things, talk about life, relationships, problems, foibles, you know, know, the rest. I almost felt like we should have been recording the show yesterday. (laughs) It's kind of freeform. Why? (laughs) Because it was like a million degrees. How about that lightning this week? Did you see any of that storm? Oh, I saw it. That was crazy. I took a shower door and I said, to heck with safety. Throw it to the wind. How did that work out for you? I'm still alive. Did you feel any like tingling through the water? (laughs) No. Other than the normal shower tingles, I I suppose? I only recently found out that the ground for my house was disconnected. So now that it's reconnected, I was... Gambling with fate. You're like, come on, lightning, hit my house. Ah, I got a new one. Test me. Test me in my repair work. And then there was an old ground by my house. I took it out. I'm like, when I got enough copper, baby, I'm cashing in. Oh, boy. I don't have enough to cash in yet. You can take it to like, give me your copper. I'll fight you for your copper. (laughs) That's okay. We're back from a holiday weekend and what was strange about this holiday weekend is we didn't spend it together no we didn't <laughs> we spend every holiday together minor and major even for Ar- some reason. arbor day flag day <laughs> it's, yeah we always end up spending holidays together so i was like oh i'm not gonna spend this one with jared oh good that's true yeah what did you do yesterday on the holiday drove back from a wedding oh that's that's wonderful yeah i saw my family i'll see them again at a funeral that'll be the next time i see any of them that's sad but true is there a funeral coming up i hope not oh but that's what's that's what it'll be everyone's married now what about like thanksgiving no that hasn't happened in a while i it's you know, i'm not that close with my extended family i like them mm, okay but they're a couple states away and that most people have kids in their own, own thing but yeah it was it was kind in of all a, fairness i don't think i've ever heard you reference your extended family well i actually all of the extended family was uh on my stepdad's I mean, side was at my stepsister's yeah. wedding this weekend. Yeah, I mean, you talk about your we were, we were brother and your sister and your mom and whatnot, but I've never heard you be like, uncle, actually, that's not true. I have heard you reference an uncle a couple of years ago. Yeah, I haven't. But more for legal reasons. I've never heard you, outside of legal reasons, heard you mention extended family. No, well, I saw my, uh, my Aunt Leslie, my Uncle Bob, my Uncle Kurt, my Aunt Betty, my cousin Scott and Wes. Betty? How old is she? Not that old. 78. No. <laughs> if she's, she's a day. Like, I think in her, her Such an old late time 50s, day. early 60s, maybe. I don't I don't know. Yeah, probably like late 50s, early 60s, I want to say. Yeah. You don't get a lot of Bettys these days. No, but no, we had a great time. Yes. Uh, my stepsister Mia got married over the weekend to a uh, great guy. His name is Paul. I've also never heard you refer, you refer to her so much as your stepsister. You usually just say my sister. Sister, stepsister. I don't know why you're like extra clarifying. Usually you just refer to me as your sister. I thought you just said you refer to me as your sister. Mia is my sister. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, nope, and, but and Mia is. She I'm got married. Pointing. Lovely ceremony. Great reception. We had uh, great food. Uh, famous Dave's barbecue. And it was open bar all night. Yeah, I had that. But you know what I did? I was one for one. I They had like special mixed drinks, so, which was like one of them was bourbon. So I just started getting. I had like one mixed drink and then i just started getting straight bourbon oh really but, but with every drink i got a bottle of water okay smart still well, got drunk i i had to drive so <laughs> i didn't i got I, I got you know i enjoyed the first part of the I reception to, and, and i had to walk so then i took care bad. of myself afterwards yeah I, I was one for one uh let's see if i can it, it was a good I, I so i ended up drinking a ton but i was drinking so much i had way more water than i had alcohol so i was pretty good the, I didn't need to, the last hour I was able to cut myself off because I was drunk. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Let's but see. I had a good time. I'll pull up a, a couple of comical pictures from the wedding. I thought were I actually there's only a couple. So, yeah, I had I literally in the first time in five years I let a photo of me go on Facebook. Really? And I, I look like an idiot. I'm drunk. I'm just smiling and holding uh-huh. a bourbon. I'm like ha ha. <laughs> so we're we're having like the appetizer time in between rounds of pictures, and my cousin Wes found the uh, the the little ring pillow that my uh, my nephew had and so he said well i found a koozie ah good for him drinking yeah. blue moon yeah and then uh but no orange and later that night we were all just kind of hanging out at the reception having a good time there you go i didn't take a single photo you didn't take a single photo no there were photos taken you'll be me. pleased to know that i wore your shirt and tie oh, from my wedding yeah my power shirt i guess that's enough of a not preamble. to say that's the nicest thing i own but it's it seems to <laughs> it's up there for it's it's in the short it's on the short list 
I didn't wear the whole suit. No, I wore regular khakis. I didn't. I was not going to wear the wedding suit. Thought about it, but decided against it. You know what's it. a mistake that I made for that? That I had your, us, your wedding. That I had us all get matching suits. I should have had my own individual one and had you do your own thing. Because now, if we all end up at a formal event, like we literally need to like pre-plan it. Like, and I'm gonna go. I get to wear it because it was from my wedding. They're having a sale on suits at JC Penny. I'm probably just gonna buy my own suit now. That's what's gonna happen if we have to go to I a own, formal event together. I own two suits, and they're both from weddings. <laughs> all right, let's do the news before we get started. Does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Light news week, mostly because it was a holiday weekend. So, you know, what are you going to do? Have a light news week. It's light. I can't do much. I could report on small things that no one cares about, but I'm not a clickbait kind of podcast. So eh, we're just going to do what's there that's interesting. It was like a gong that just went off. The Venom director refuses to say whether or not Spider-Man is in the movie. He says he's not legally sure what he is allowed to say, which probably means that Spider-Man is in the movie. But now, which Spider-Man is it? Chimney sweep Tom Holland, I'd assume. Okay. He's he's very tiny and British. Okay, fair. Speaking of Spider-Man, I rewatched Spider-Man 1. And Spider-Man 3. What are they, on Netflix? I saw Spider-Man 3 was on Netflix. I don't care enough to watch it. No, it was it. on YouTube TV. Oh, okay. Um, and I texted you. I It all came to me. I had a moment of clarity. It's Mary Jane's fault. I blame Mary Jane. I mean, Kirsten Dunst is no good. No, no. I'm not blaming like Mary Jane for the demise of the franchise. I'm just saying... All the bad stuff that happens to Peter in Spider-Man 3 is directly Mary Jane's fault. I like her interview with the vampire and that episode of Next Generation she was on. Mary Jane is a trollop in that movie. (laughs) What was so weird about the beginning of Spider-Man 3 is they have her singing, and I can't tell if I'm supposed to like it or hate it. That's the purpose. Like, she gets panned. But, you know, I know that she gets panned in the movie, but I can't tell as like me, the viewer of the movie. I've never been able to figure out if you're supposed to like it or hate it. I think that it's that's on purpose. Like you don't you don't want to make Kirsten Dunst sound bad as a singer, but also like the the deal is that Mary Jane really is not a great I was Broadway singer. Bored, but I wasn't like ah, that's the worst singing I've ever heard. It was like ah, well, it, this it, is a long it scene just, that won't end. It just sets up Peter to make make those guy mistakes. Like, oh, th- people say mean things about Spider-Man all the time. And, you know, obviously, legitimately, when he's doing that, you kind of cringe, like, as as an older seasoned adult male, you're like, yeah, that's probably something you shouldn't say. Like, she needs it to be about her for a moment. Also, at that point, like, Mary Jane, where is she living? And why is she not letting Peter, like, move out of that hovel, that little dingy, hostile, slumlord cabin he's in? Because they liked the supporting cast of that girl and the landlord, who was funny in the second one and not in the third. Yeah, but I mean, not a good movie. If Mary Jane doesn't, you know, push Peter away or, um, you know, whatever. Although I guess Peter, you know, kissing Gwen Stacy didn't help. But yeah, I still, if she doesn't go running to, um, what's his face, um, Harry, some of those other bad things would not have happened. Oh, and he has such bad delivery in that movie, James Franco. Yeah, yeah. When he's in the hospital, it's like my best friends. Hate you, hate you so much. Yeah, my best friends. But then, like Spider Man One, when I rewatched it, that's a you know it still holds up. I think a little yeah, bit. It's a good movie. I remember some of like watching it. Some of the shots are iconic. Willem Dafoe is so underrated in that. No, he's not. He's equally rated for what he should be, which is amazing. He's a crazy man with a goblin face. You know what I really loved? I th- I forgot how great the scene was when he's having that conversation with himself in the mirror yeah and uh, going back and forth yeah, that that was a creatively his, constructed scene his golem moment yeah i I, rem- I remember weird things about the third one like i remember when the trailer was gonna drop for that movie i was in college and i was talking to you on the phone and the school that i was at was having like a massive like nationally recognized game and you're like why aren't you at the game i'm like because the spider-man 3 trailer is about to drop you're like hmm, idiot yeah, and I then, mean, that'll be there after the game. And then I went to uh, the movie, probably, it must have been opening weekend, I went into the city to go see it at the IMAX theater, and there were so many fatties on the escalator that the escalator set on fire, which put <laughs> off, and then it shut down the IMAX theater in New York. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> like, ah, fat people. And then there's this one little kid who was like seven years old, like such a little jackass, and he was just like, my dad's a lawyer, he'll sue! Like, shut up! <laughs> Sue for what? Not getting to see Spider Man. <laughs> I mean, I guess so I did. Unfor- I you know, I guess not. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the movie in IMAX in New York because of people on an escalator that burned out the motor. That's fair. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, he might be in Venom. 
is probably going to be in Venom. It, no one will ever reference it in the MCU, ever, I'm sure. So it doesn't really matter. Also, like, Sandman is, like, wicked. Eh, he was an eh villain. Oh, so you're going back to that movie. You just want to talk about that. I like him. I like Thomas Jane. No, it wasn't Thomas Jane. What's Thomas name? Hayden Church. Thank you. I love the fight. I love when he gets his face smashed against, yeah, uh, against the, the train. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I love the scene of him trying to like build himself up and pick up the locket. Why are we talking about that movie? I would. <laughs> We're I, talking about Venom. I would have rather seen more, but I'm getting to it. There could have been more Venom. Like They just totally wasted Eddie Brock and Venom in that movie. Yeah. Totally wasted him. And I know a lot of people were against the casting of Eric Foreman, but I understood the thought process behind it of like him being kind of an equal to Peter, but then his opposite versus like Eddie Brock in the books is like supposed to be like sixty pounds heavier in muscle. Mm-hmm. So I got the idea of like doing the like antithesis of Peter of having it also be like kind of a small scrawny guy who just has a similar powers but in a different way. Yeah, but still sucked. Okay. It wasn't good. All right, moving on. Yeah, he's probably in that movie, but the director legally can't say. This is the thing that happened right after we recorded. Damn it. Uh Uh-oh. Alec Baldwin is out. He's no longer Thomas Wayne. Save Thomas. Oh? I'm going to make it Batman v Superman. I didn't want to check Twitter. I'm sure someone did that joke, but I just want to say that I was the first. Okay, go go with it. Go with it. Save Thomas. It's very disturbing to watch you make that (laughs) face and and that sound. I don't like it. So yeah, Alec Baldwin's out. He's like, yep, there's another 25 guys that could do that role. It's a scheduling thing, which makes me think that Alec Baldwin took the role and it was immediately hit with like a wave of angry internet comic book movie fans. And he's like, yeah, this isn't worth my time. (laughs) Who gives a shit? Not Alec Baldwin. No. Well, the other thing that was a rumor, which... He's a big star now. He's been a star for decades. I know, but he's like a smart big star now. Well, the rumor, I can't back this up as fact, but the rumor is that this version of Thomas Wayne is going to be a bumbling 80s Trump-esque businessman. And he already does that once a week. Yeah, I can see why he'd want to do something better. So, I don't know. I mean, Something he, different. He, he says it's scheduling conflicts, there's the Trump thing, or... My theory just being he took a thing and got annoyed at how many Twitter mentions he got. That's also fair. Be my guess, but can't back that up either. It's also kind of an underhanded thing to be like, yeah, 25 other guys can do this. Mm. Really devalues the role, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Here's the last time I'm going to talk about this, hopefully. And Doubtful. I'm only, I'm only bringing up the story so I can say I'm all done talking about this. Okay. Comics gate. It's stupid and I hate it. And at this point, I'm also tired of it more and than anything. Then, then can I give you some like advice? Stop giving it attention. That, that's literally the point of this. Uh, then, then you, but you're giving it attention by bringing it up. I'm, <laughs> I'm bringing it up to say that I'm all done. That's like when you get in a fight with your significant other and you just have to. Have that, I don't want to like bring it up again, but I had one more thing I was thinking about. It restarts the fight. That's what you're doing here. There was a bit of news around it. New Hampshire-based company Alterna Comics took some heat this week based on their social media policy for creators, which people associate with Comicsgate, saying that you couldn't use block bots if you're a creator or blockchain. And I didn't know what those things were. I had to learn. That's like you could say like, oh, this person I don't like, I am going to block all of their followers because I don't want them to contact me in any way, shape, or form. Oh, okay. Like, so it's like, like a like giant if, social media filter. Yeah, like if oh you associate with this, I don't want to deal with that. So it's like a six degrees of separation block. Yeah, then but they said you could So if you know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy, you're blocked even though you remotely know that guy. They said that they need to promote their books online through through Facebook and Twitter, you, but you can't use blockchains because that might alienate potential fans. You can block on a person-to-person basis, but you can't do it broadly. And then they were asked about Comicsgate, and the guy who runs the company gave a real wishy-washy answer. Everyone turned against it. And at this point, I'm just tired of it a lot of the people involved with this are bad people if you see harassment call out the harassment but at this point it's like it reminds me of almost like elementary school middle school like if you just ignore the jackass in the corner i'll give you an example this is a real life example one day in school there was uh, one of the more like troublemaker kids who wasn't getting a lot of attention he took out a foam football and he ate it and he got a lot of attention for it but then when he started to be ignored a second time nothing happened and that's kind of how i want to treat comic skate we all acknowledged it it's stupid call it out if you see it but on the other hand let's just ignore it and hope it goes away like i was I saying guess, is don't that the... don't don't put wind in its sails is that that's the right what you're doing answer? you're putting wind in its sails right i don't now. know if i am or not i don't know if it's the right answer to say eh, just ignore it 
call it out if it's bad. It's like if someone's harassing someone, be like, ah, eh, stop doing that. You why, why don't we like dig in and celebrate the positive things? Yeah, but at this point, I just feel like so much attention has been called to it. I, I feel like the smart thing might be to just ignore it. These people are still going to scream in their echo chambers where they get to hear people of similar thoughts like talk back at them. But do you need to step into that? I don't know. I don't know the right answer. I'm For my part, unless it is bad and specific, I'm just not going to acknowledge it. Good idea. It's like that Simpsons Halloween episode where you have to ignore the giant advertisements that Paul Lincoln's playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got Paul Lincoln's guarantee. And then there's still one that's left over because he's offering Homer a donut. That makes me think of the uh, David Pumpkins skit. <laughs> I'm David Pumpkins. Yeah. But yeah, you know the, the Simpsons one I'm talking about, the Halloween yeah, episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, for me, okay, reference back your early Simpsons knowledge. Think about the one where all of the mascots come to life. That's Comicsgate. Just ignore it, and it'll go away. But not David Pumpkin. <laughs> I guess Tom Hanks did not want to do that skit. I saw uh, Bobby Monaghan, I think it was on Seth Meyers, and he's like, he hated the idea, didn't want it. He was like, why don't you have someone do it next week? But then it became massively popular. Oh, yeah, it was a great skit. So yeah, that's my theory about comics, Kate. It's the Simpsons Halloween mascot theory. <laughs> I don't have Paul Anka. I just have Jared, but we'll go from there. Yeah, you know. Also, Boy Alterna got a ton of crap this week. Good to D- know. Deserved. Deserved crap. You can't... They tried to be neutral, and it just... The wishy-washiness of it made people be like, yep, done. Here's good news. Yes, please. Ah, I forgot to look up Bendis News. What's he doing this what week? What the hell? He's fine. He's he's doing good. Well, does that mean we don't do the Gabin about Bendis thing? I, I got nothing for him, so he's doing fine. Okay, good, good for <laughs> Bendis. Popular franchise. It's been gone for a little bit. I'm kind of surprised it's been gone as long as it has. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming back to comics. Not to movies, but to comics. All right. <laughs> it is worth mentioning because it is going to be written by Donny Cates with art by Jeff Shaw. These are the guys that did the Thanos Wind series. And that book sold like hotcakes. That book sold out fast and hard. Everything Donny Cates does for Marvel so far. Is it Smash? So Yeah, he, he's smashing Marvel. Yeah, I know the vernacular of the kids. Oh, I, wow. I don't, but I knew that one. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be one that you know. <laughs> of course, that's the one I know. Oh. I, I tried using one the other week. I, I think I I don't really understand the difference between lit and woke. And yeah, I, I'm, mm. I'm not up with it. It's not my thing. You're not there yet. I, Work on it. I'm not going to. I'm an old man. I hate everything new. But yeah, I mean, everything that Donny Cates has done has sold. It's also you know sold with merit it's i don't feel like it's a, like a hype and we're doing it because uh his other stuff was good everything he's done so far for marvel has been kind of outstanding so i'd say buy guardians of the galaxy out january all right i'd also say buy every comic in january because i want your money why wait till january <laughs> <laughs> and then sad news this was it was a one big day it was like my god there is a whole generation of comics creatives that are just dying marie severin and gary frederick both passed away on the same day marie severin is mostly known at least from me and i think a lot of other people is known as as a colorist but she was also an artist in her own right and she also did layouts for kirby for covers which is crazy kirby would be like "Ah, i don't got time for this you can do the layouts that's insane like the best artist of all time was like you got this speaking of kirby okay that piece of art that you shared today on Twitter. Oh, yeah, that was a fun one. Did you get that commissioned? Yeah, that was a cover I sent him. That's nice. Yeah, I liked that a lot. Based on... This man, this monster? Yeah, fin- yeah. I got a Ninja Turtles 51 has a blank cover, and I sent that in to do an homage of Fantastic Four 51, which is my favorite Kirby cover. It's up at the store now. It's, it's pretty not, cool. It's not for sale, but you can look at it. But yeah, so Marie Severin passed away, uh, best known as a colorist in the 60s and 70s, and also... For as much as like people are talking about it now of like representation in comics, she was one of the first big female names in comics. And what I like about her is like when it happened, and I'm only basing this off of really what they have like in letters pages and uh, stand soapbox and all that stuff. There didn't seem to be an emphasis on her gender. She was like, oh no, she's just the best one for the job, so we're gonna use her because she's the best at what she does. Mm-hmm. Which I don't think there was. <sighs> Again, going off of letters and what's in the back of the books, they used her because she was good. And for what we see now, I mean, she is a definite trailblazer for having just talented women in the industry 
because they're talented. Yeah, what a novel idea. Yeah, it's not like filling a quote. It's like, oh no, she's just the best. So we're going to use her because she's the best at what she does, which is awesome. And then Gary Frederick uh, is best known as being the co-creator of Ghost Rider and also uh, co-creator of Son of Satan. Marvel is real into Satanism after like Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. Okay. They, they were. What do you want from me? That was a pop culture thing. No, I mean, it's Okay. So yeah, he he passed away, and I mean, especially Ghost Rider is a biggish character. Son of Satan kind of has gone away, but was big for a while. That was a weird thing at the wedding. I was at they um they had a drink. Uh, one of the beers was called like Rosemary's Baby. I'm like, oh yeah, I love getting beers that are named after movies that were directed by child rapists. Mm mm, libation. I... Then they gave me a look. Did you really say that to the person? Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it was good beer. So you you ended up drinking it. Yeah. So you like really stood your ground on that. <laughs> he can't come back in the country. Why are you naming beers after movies he did? I don't know. Isn't there more that let me Google. I'm gonna haven't done this in a while. Time to fact check the show. See it what if there's other meanings for Rosemary's baby. Rosemary's nope. baby. Just a movie done by a child rapist. Oh yeah. Just, just a movie. Who's not allowed to come back in the country for the child rape. But there's a beer named after it now. Yeah, just a weird name for a beer. It was based on a book by Ira, Le- Ira Levine? Ira Levin? Yeah, don't know that. Okay, cool. That's it for news. Going out with some people that died, but both were industry titans. We've been getting a lot of people passing away recently. It's just a generation is passing away, which is depressing, but names that'll be remembered, mm. which is more than most of us can say. Well, I hope they'll be remembered someday. You won't be. In a positive way. Either one. I'll be remembered for like a week or two. Do you know how I want to die? I only have one really prerequisite for dying. In, uh, spontaneous combustion. No. In a spectacular fashion that makes us go, wow. Uh, kind of the opposite of that. When I die, all I want to do is, if someone reported you, oh, hey, Zach died, all I want to happen is for the people not to be like, of course it was like that. Like, I just don't want to, I don't <laughs> want to die stupidly. I don't want people to be like, for fuck's sake. That's all I want. Okay, you just want to be like, how, how did he die? In a normal fashion. Yeah, that's all I like want. <laughs> Zach normal or like regular person normal? I just don't want someone to be exasperated after hearing how I die. Do you not want to be found in like a compromising position when you're dead? As long as it's a normal compromising position. Is there such a thing as a normal <laughs> I, compromising position? You know what I mean? I just don't want someone to be exasperated. Like, how did he die? Like, yeah, of course that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah he was trying to fix a French drain around his house and it got struck by lightning because the copper pipe wasn't set properly for the ground of his house that's all i think that's a minor want i have in life not one i will necessarily get i i almost wonder if i i kind of wish it was like you know when i when i pass oh i could see that i could see that i just don't want people not like a oh what an idiot but like "Hmm, makes sense yeah that's just i just don't want he he died doing what he liked these dumb things all right that's it for comics news we're going on to the world of sports entertainment with Jared Sports Reports. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. Bear tested. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40-yard line. It's time for another Jared Sports Report. Well, what Bo- happened this week? I know nothing. Uh, well, the Boston Red Sox continue their their march towards 100 wins. Uh, they're at 95 after Labor Day. You so said they were doing bad the week before. They yeah, they were kind of kind of hit a hiccup, but they're kind of bouncing out. Their bullpen is still kind of suspect, and you know, we'll, we'll see here down the stretch. But they they are on pace to win over 100 games and have the majors' best record. So they're still you know hanging tight, staying a, above the Yankees. There, the Yankees with the second best record in the majors, if my memory recall is good and on point so um you know the al east continues to be yeah, really you could competitive lie to me and i wouldn't know no but the other people the people who listen and care know obviously the Sox want to win the division outright and uh and get right into a divisional series and avoid the playing game which it looks like that it's going to be the Sox or the yankees playing in that playing game uh so you you kind of want to avoid that one game playoff the NFL is back, baby, for regular season action. The Philadelphia Eagles raised their banner on Thursday night, the day the, the show comes out if you're not a Patreon member. So this should be getting you hyped up. Hopefully Philadelphia doesn't burn itself to a ground. I'm guessing there's going to be some kind of like Rocky appearance or something. What's the Patriots opener? They start with the Texans on Sunday at 1 o'clock. So uh, get your fantasy teams set. Get your, 
believe it's in Houston. Okay. Why? I was just curious. Uh, okay, cool. I mean, season openers are fun. They are fun. I'm excited for it. Sorry I asked a follow-up question. Like, well, why? I what did... do you want to know? Well, no, I was like, oh, you like, is this leading to the point where you're like, I'll grill some hamburgers and we can have people over and have fun times? No. I mean, I can tell you that we're going to have to record on a different night on the Celtics opener because that's at 8 o'clock the night we record it. It's a home game. You've really kind of planned ahead, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Good, good to know. Home game with Philly. Ooh, yeah. No, their first three games are going to be the three best teams, which is going to be awesome. But Philly, Milwaukee, and New York. New York. Yeah. The wow. first three games are going to be good. Three. Antes Acupo. <laughs> what a fun name to say. I'm looking forward to more Tommy. I saw him in the shower. He looks like all of Australia. <laughs> Um, unrelated to what we're talking about, because that's like in a month. Yeah, so the NFL gets back in full swing. College football is in full swing. Week one is done. They're on to week two. So that's all exciting. Trying to think of anything else major. Something with Nike. Ah, don't worry about it. It's oh, fine. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Nike released a new ad campaign with Colin Kaepernick as the, the headliner of the Just Do It. I believe it's for the it's the 30th anniversary of the yeah, Just Do It campaign. Nice, huh? So um, that's obviously got, got some people uh, making some uh, choices. What I think is interesting about it, at this point, I don't think an ad campaign is going to sway people one way or the other. Like, your feelings aren't going to be changed by this, but they sure are getting press about it, which is never bad. It's. I almost wonder if it's like, I don't Some care. Some people what... are going to double down and buy like Nike stuff because of it. Some people will stop Who, who was it, it that, who was the famous person who said, I don't care what they write about me as long as they're writing about me? I don't know. I can't remember. I wanted to say like William Randolph Hearst. Now I got to make sure. I want, now I want to know. How cool would it be if I had that right? Uh, It'd be normal and fine. It wouldn't be cool. I remembered a thing someone said. Oh, George Cohen. Don't even know who the hell he is. Good enough. He only cared that you said his name right. Anyway, it looks like a lot of people said that, to be honest. People like being written about. Oh, no, not P.T. Barnum. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, it's an interesting advertising campaign in that they had to know that this was going to generate a lot of backlash and people are burning Nike goods and cutting up their Nike goods. And I don't, and they're like saying, oh, we're doing this in protest of Nike. I don't think you understand how a protest works. This is like what happens when Captain America was a Nazi. Yeah. And they're like, I'm going to burn my comic and tear it up. They already have your money. They don't care. You paid for it. Who yeah. cares? Do I mean, you, once you own it, do what you want. More more power to you. I mean, I've seen a lot of people post like, if you don't like Nike anymore and you don't want your Nike stuff, that's fine. Donate it and then get a receipt and then have it be a tax write-off and then buy whatever you want to buy. But the interesting component to this, kind of the interesting dichotomy, is Nike just re-upped the contract with the NFL to be the official supplier of uniforms and cleats and things like that so now you've got the nfl who just re-signed a deal with nike to be the exclusive uh, apparel provider for the nfl so their the nike logo is all over the jerseys Mm. the pants and now the nfl which is kind of the center of this controversy with colin kaepernick has the nike logo logo everywhere and now colin kaepernick is the face of nike has he signed with anyone nope he has not his is, is anti this, his antitrust his, done? his antitrust lawsuit against the NFL and the NFL owners is actually moving forward. So he has filed a lawsuit against the NFL and the owners saying they've colluded to keep him from playing football because of what he's doing. His career is probably over. Probably Sport, sports wise probably. Probably getting guess. there. I mean he's I from an athletic standpoint and a quarterback standpoint he's still probably better than the lower third of the league at the quarterback position that are starting so that's do you in- think emma would want to sign him like whether you agree with him or not just like is that a can of warbs you really want to deal with i think if the the situation's right for your team but i think that it would bring such a, a different storm and whirlwind upon your team that's what you kind of have to weigh is it worth what he's going what what will come with him and the baggage that will come with him and how the argument has been framed well and anyone who would or wouldn't sign him like for as much as you'd like to put it around like your own moral standings at the end of the day this they would have to be a business decision which isn't you know but what, what but people th- probably want to hear but it's probably the truth like how will this affect the bottom line it, yes and it becomes a national discussion based on the attention it gets from certain people in positions of power and not just 
President Trump, but other people who kind of latch on to this. There are celebrities who, I think it was uh, Rich of Big and Rich, uh, he had some tweets out there about, you know, boycott Nike. And he sent a picture of his sound guy socks that were cut up with the Nike logo off the top, <laughs> which to me is just going to be really annoying because the top of the socks just going to keep rolling. Ah, They're going to fray a bit. But in full transparency, also, there were pictures of Colin Kaepernick back when he was playing wearing socks during warm up of pigs with police hats on. So, like, there is a little I'm trying to think of the right word. I don't want is duality the right word. Plur- plurality. I don't know. But there's a, I mean, that's not a good optic for Colin Kaepernick either. But I think, in again, all fairness, I'm picturing literal pigs being police officers, and it's kind of adorable. But I think it's the message behind. Oh, the no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking of actual pigs doing human work, and I think it's funny. But I'm going to cycle back to the, my <laughs> argument that I've made about this whole situation every time it's come up on the show is that it's unfortunate that this platform that both the players and politicians and leaders have in our country they're not using it in the in the correct way why not have a forum with the NFL players and say okay i really don't want you guys kneeling during the anthem can we have an open discussion as to why express your feelings as to why you need to bring attention to this and and what it is you really bring attention to which you know is a lot of it is Racial profiling and police brutality is what Colin Kaepernick has said, what he was trying to bring attention to. I think people, the way the argument's been framed by people who find him kneeling during the anthem as offensive, I I get it. And listen, I think it's appropriate to stand for the anthem. I stand for the anthem. It's just one of those things I think that's appropriate to do. And I stand for pigs in uniforms. Not an insulting term for cops, just literal pigs in uniforms. I'd stand for that. But I think this whole thing would not be an issue anymore had people been willing to just have the conversation that Colin Kaepernick was trying to start. If you have that conversation, then this is a a moot point at this point, but nobody's willing or open to have that conversation. And what's happening is it's diverting the conversation and framing it in a different picture and in a different light. And it's not going to be productive or go anywhere until somebody's willing to have the real conversations. I'm ready for the real conversation. How do you fit that much hair under a helmet? I think he cornrows it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they. I thought it was just wild and free. It was just compact. It could be just like you got to have a really big helmet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real conversation Extra, he doesn't need a helmet actually he just <laughs> i feel like this is nike giving him another platform to try and express where he's coming from as well and it also shows like nike apparently has been paying him this whole time and people are like well colin kaepernick hasn't you know where does he have money where is he getting money from he hasn't been playing in the nfl nike's been paying him he's been signed by nike and they've continued to fulfill their contract with him and they were waiting for the right time to, to pounce on it they also, uh, there were a couple other ones. There's one with Serena Williams. You, you can take the queen out of her um, uniform, but you can't take away her superpowers because she was wearing this, what they were calling it a yeah, cat yeah. suit. We talked about that yeah. last week, yeah. So it's Her Wakandan-inspired cat suit. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's interesting that Nike's taking this. Their, um, their shares actually dropped uh, when I checked this afternoon by about 2%, so we'll see what happens from there. But it's a, it's a bold strategy for certain. All right, from sports to sports, we're going to mix comics with sports because that always goes well. They just, they're two great tastes that go great together or the opposite of that. They're always terrible. Like peanut butter and graham crackers? I mean, peanut butter enhances anything, but this week we are talking the short. You don't like peanut butter and graham crackers? Nah, graham crackers are too dry. <sighs> but like a peanut butter pie, like oh, the graham cracker crust. Yeah, okay. There you go. See? I can be about that. Ooh, even though it's kind of a sweetie, a sweet thing. Peanut butter is always like in my asterisk. I'm like, I don't really do sugary things, asterisk, unless it has peanut butter in it. I got this really good um, flavor of ice cream. It kind of stood out to me the other day when I was in the store. It's from Giffords. It's peanut butter pie. Really good, actually. This Okay, whatever. We'll do the theme. It's time for Jared's Reading Corner. It's Jared's Reading Corner. From Jared's Sports Reports to Jared's Reading Corner, it's all football, baby. I'm actually also drinking Gatorade. Ooh, on brand. It's a sports-themed kind of night here in the show. NFL Super Pro, a very limited series that was supposed to be an ongoing, only went for 12 issues. Initially written by famed X-Men scribe Fabian Niseza, this is generally regarded as one of the worst books of all time, and Fabian Niseza admitted he just did it to get free NFL tickets, and still receives flack for how terrible this is to this day. I'm wondering if, like, I'm going to do a quick 30 seconds, because I 
walked in the door and he said, we're doing something different. Read this now. Oh, yeah, like, I said we were doing Spider-Man. I, I ran out of time, didn't have time to read it. I got part of the way through, did some notes. I, I can imagine that, obviously, they made a deal with, the NFL made a deal with Marvel to make this happen because they use like the league logo and things like that. So 91, 92, 12 issues and a special. Publication history, let's see. Oh, wow. There was two crossovers. And the first one, Spider-Man, and the last one, Captain America. He crossed over Boom. with Captain America. Oh. <laughs> Will Ooh. the Super Pro return in the current Marvel Universe? Because this c- takes place in the real Marvel Universe. Will he ever be seen again, the NFL Super Pro? The answer is no. Although in Marvel Team Up number nine, Stiltman says, quote, I beat up a guy called Super Pro last week. Silliest looking guy. Who's Stiltman? He's a daredevil villain. <laughs> he beat up Super Pro. Briefly, Turk Barrett took over the role of Stiltman. Oh, anyway. He's actually, it's been an ongoing gag in the Daredevil Netflix show. They keep on showing the Stiltman armor in the background in every season. It gets a little more complete. Can't wait for season three. Stiltman, baby! Can I just, I'm looking at this article. Here are the three villains they list for the Super Pro. You have Sanction, who's crime boss Marco Sanzonaire. He's the main villain in this first book, whose dealings are constantly thwarted by Super Pro. Then you have constantly. Then you have Quick Kick, who's a field goal kicker turned evil ninja. Ah, what are you gonna do? You got a skill? I'm gonna use it. And then Instant Replay, an assassin with the ability to travel short distances through time. I regret this book already. For <laughs> just talk about the book, just talk about this. <laughs> Instant Replay is better than. <laughs> plant man because at least he's an assassin he's got like nefarious things you know what's oh, hilarious wow. about this book he gets his superpowers through like, unlicensed steroids and like a yeah a strange chemical combination of steroids the front the front uh cover says he went from sacking quarterbacks to tackling crime this thing is just oh my goodness it is pure pulp I mean, it's kind of nothing. It's amazing that there's like 20 pages and nothing happens. And it, it has unbelievably terrible dialogue. It takes place in Los Angeles and it talks about Phil Grayfield, whose career is cut short by injury. So he becomes becomes a sports reporter and then he's doing a story on the super uh, modified football uniform and ends up getting chemically enhanced because of bad guys, because comic books. <laughs> and Spider-Man's following him around. And this movie has unbelievably terrible dialogue. I like that he's not even good at stopping crime. No. He tries to do it and like he falls off a car. He's like, ah, I'm going to chase him down now because I fell. Almost broke my sternum. Yeah. He's also like, this book is just full of like, wants to be edgy dialogue. Like there's one panel early, this criminal driving a car recklessly who the blank are you get the blank off of the car and by blank i mean just like symbols like the uh, what's the asterisks and spinny bits yeah isn't there like a uh, a technical term for that but it's always I the same it thing it's like a bits. dollar sign pound sign at sign percent sign that's the same for all of them and in more than one occasion super pro and then later spider-man says what a mouth on this guy i'm gonna have to wash it out with a fist I think this is where Joss Whedon got the idea for the language comments that Captain America made in Age of Ultron. Or not. Probably not. (laughs) One of those, though. So, for some reason, Spider-Man's in Los Angeles, probably to help promote this terrible book. That's what you do. You bring Spider-Man and try and up sales. I'm surprised it wasn't Wolverine. Marquee value, baby. That's how you sell books. Bring in guest stars. It doesn't really make sense why he'd be on the West Coast, but they try and play it off like, yeah, J. Jonah Jameson sent me out here to take pictures of Super Pro because a story in L.A. really means a lot to the Daily Bugle in New York. Uh, They've done that before. I mean, first appearance of the Lizard, they sent him down to Florida. Oh, Dr. Connors. It's not without precedent, but, you know, I'm making excuses for a book that's dumb and bad. Like the fact that when he's having his flashback about how he got his powers, he's brushing his teeth. Sexy. What a sexy book. So he's really the main premise of the book is there's a current slash, I think, former NFL player who I like read the name. I'm like, oh, this is a real player. No, it wasn't a real player. It was not. Tim Pressman, which Un- sounds like a real player. Unlike Charles Barkley. Yeah. Uh, which maybe, you know, it'd be more impressive if Super Pro went down to the canyon and saw if Godzilla was still working on his layups <laughs> in his or- short game. Maybe we'll do the Carmelo Anthony book one day. Oh, boy. Oh, I saw the, the other night I was like watching through some. YouTube clips or maybe of the Jeremy Lin one. I really only know <laughs> some YouTube clips of Pawn Stars, and they had the Superman versus Muhammad Ali comic for sale. Yeah, I can't remember how much they 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 went for. That book is worth some serious cash. Yeah, yeah that's Neil Adams. 
So you anyway, what's so great about that book is they, uh, I guess, on the cover, there are all these celebrities out there, and you were supposed to uh, get permission to like use their likenesses. So everyone that said no, like, they put mustaches. Yeah, on, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I learned a comic thing. It's a Neil Adams book. I want to say that was seventy six. I might be wrong. I'm not gonna check. So at one point, Spider Man thwarts an assassination, and this guy tries to jump from building to building. Spidey doesn't even try and like save him. He just lets him fall to his death in an alleyway. And As then goes he and does. Takes, and goes and takes pictures. And then there's this big showdown at the bad guy's house trying to find this mysterious tape to try and exonerate this NFL player, Tim Pressman, who was a former player who, for some reason, Super Pro feels this need to help and save I, because stuff. He was kneeling. <laughs> I can only assume. No, he was trying to show he wasn't locked into gambling debts. So he comes and beats up a lot of nondescript villains and uses corny dialogue like, so, uh, oh, that's so your boss knows that he lost home field advantage and leaves a broken body of some nondescript anonymous henchman in this patio area with a really sweet, like, patio chair. <sighs> so that's NFL Super Pro number one. Does it really make you want to mix sports and comics? Uh, football baby that's it's all the rage the nfl has its own superhero no it's very uh but hey you know you'd want him in nfl blitz <laughs> that'd be hilarious that i think he'd be a great character in nfl blitz it uh, is no it's a no it's a big <laughs> no and oh i love how much sports dialogue slash puns they try and sneak into this and none of them like land oh no it's at terrible all. it's terrible he's one of the worst superheroes of all time he only speaks in football related puns amazingly enough that's limited he doesn't have a lot to say no it, it, he is just he's not very good he's the plant man of marvel heroes <laughs> compared to the plant man of marvel villains yes I mean, I can't even really threaten you with that much more NFL Super Pro because uh, he's barely there. Yeah. Plant Man's been around for a while, and I can threaten you with a lot of Plant Man. I but almost this, would rather read Plant Man than Super Pro. He's got 12 issues. I assume they're all crap. It's, I can't imagine they get better. Not very good. I will say that. I can't imagine why this only lasted 12 issues. Yeah, wasn't very good. Thin characters, thin you know everything spider-man isn't even very good in this but this brought out your favorite thing football don't you want to read about football i'd rather read about like good football like i love football i don't like bad football <laughs> a stupid piece of crap oh man yeah this like is said, like the cleveland browns of comics generally regarded as one of the worst and while it's not overly a Offensively bad. The dialogue is stupid. The story doesn't really go anywhere. It's so nondescriptly dumb. It's so cut and paste. Meet superhero. Superhero's evil guy. Superhero kind of is inept at his job early on. And my guess is he's probably very inept throughout the entire run of the comic book series. And then at the end, he kind of kind of saves the day, but not really. It's trying to hook you into. It's definitely read about a quick gun. kick. It's a gun for hire kind of gig, like where no one really gave a crap. They just wanted to get a paycheck at the end of the day and didn't try that hard. Yeah. They said, ah, this is a stupid gimmick, but I guess if you're paying me, then I'll do the gimmick. <laughs> so don't read this. Everybody's got a price, man. I, we don't have one for comics. I think we need to come up with a comic rating system, which I think should be buy it, get it from a dollar bin, or burn it if you see it. I don't think you should burn. <laughs> I think that's a little harsh. Throw it or throw it away. We'll say throw it away. Oh, no, no, no. Even better than throw it away. Uh, use it as wrapping paper. So many people like... Re-gift it. <laughs> they like to hang onto their comics. Like, I just can't throw them away. I'm like, you could. It'd be fine. And actually, if you throw your book away, then that might help increase the value of everyone else's because now there's fewer. I think uh, I think it's either it's buy it, dollar bin it, or... Nah. Or you just make a noise at it. Nah. Which won't make any sense if that's what we do and then we just don't explain it. Like... So on our rating system, ah! yeah, I'd say I don't, I don't like that. I don't think that works for me. So we can we can do buy it, dollar bin it, or throw it back. Wrapping paper, repurpose <laughs> sure. it, repurpose it. I say shred it. There we go. That's what I'm gonna go with. I say repurpose it. All right. You can use it to like you know put it in the bottom of Clunk's cage. So this is for sale in the store <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> in the dollar bin. 
I don't know. Maybe it's like a little piece of um, morbid curiosity. If you love football, this is the book not the book for, for no you. one. Yeah. All right, we're we're moving on. That that sucked. It was no good. But Actually, I, thought, I tried to include your interest in the comics. Here, here we go. I came up with a read. So buy it, dollar bin it, only if you're freakishly curious, or repurpose it. That's one too many. I'd put this under only if you're freakishly curious. That way, because you're trying to sell comics. That's the point of the show, right? It's the point. We don't want to tell people to not buy it. So only if you're freakishly curious. From there, we're moving on to letters to the editors. Now for my favorite part of the show. What did I say? Talk to the audience. Oh, God, this is always death. Here's another one of your letters to the editors. There's been a, a swarm of things on the internet recently, I and mean, this has been around for a while, but it seems to have reared its head again. Should Michael Keaton return as Batman? Hmm. It depends. Is he in Depends? Batman? Just because It would old. have to be the... I think it, it would was have an to adult be, diaper yeah, joke. Know. It would have to be the right story, because we never really... Well, no, not never. But we never saw him as Batman with Robin or a sidekick. It'd be kind of cool to see... Um, Let's assume that... Okay, so we're going with the idea that this would be a sequel. So two movies, they're out of there. No more Batman Forever, no more Batman and Robin. This is a world where no other superheroes exist, and a woman can kiss a man and electrocute him and live through it. Would you? How about like seeing like a... Um, if he came back, like saw him in like a Nightwing story, like he's training the next Batman or like a Terry McGinnis thing, a live action. I've, that's what I've seen a lot of people saying that it should be like a Batman Beyond thing where he's training the next generation. And that's where it gets difficult for me because you can't really, you can't do Dark Knight Returns, I think, for two main reasons. A book you haven't read, but I mean, a big part of it is Batman versus Superman. And this is a world, hypothetically, where other superheroes don't exist. So you can't really have that history if there isn't one. And two, too many Batmans, Batmans, too many Batmans, Batman movie have stolen ideas from Dark Knight Returns that if you were to do a more direct translation, people would just go, I've seen that in a crappier movie. So do you think that they've kind of painted themselves into a corner with Batman here? At least with an older Batman. I, if you could crack the right story, I'd be all about it. I would love that. But I think it that is a harder nut to crack than most writers could do. Yeah. I'd love it if they did it. I mean, or just go nuts and do like nothing comics related. Bring Burton back, who didn't seem to really give half a crap about comics. No, I think it'd be interesting to see like a like Tim Burton's vision of what, what the next Batman would have been or an older Batman or, or the trans. <laughs> Positioning of Batman. <laughs> or in all honesty, don't bring him back because when was the last good Tim Burton movie? Nightmare Before Christmas? He didn't do that. He just produced it. He had his name attached to it. Alice in Wonderland? That movie sucked. Really? No, I'm just throwing out Tim Burton movies now. I'm sure he's Ed done Wood? something good. He's done good movies. But didn't he do Edward Scissorhands? Yeah, that was early 90s. I'm going to say Ed Wood was his last good movie. Prove me wrong. I'm going to list off some Tim Burton movies here. Recent Tim Burton movies. Beetlejuice was 88, so that was before. <laughs> Dumbo, the Dumbo is coming out. That should be interesting. That looks bad. Big Fish. Oh, okay, I like Big Fish. Sweeney Todd. Eh. Dark uh, Shadows. Mm, terrible. I saw that for real on Red Fox. Not good. The 2001 Planet of the Apes with Mark Wahlberg. Terrible. Saw it in theaters. Mars Attacks. No, not good. James and the Giant Peach was good. Uh, wait, did he direct Big Fish? I like Big Fish. Let's see. All filmography. The dad was a fish. As director. But it was a metaphor. He was the director of Big Fish. All right, I liked that one. 1999 Sleepy Hollow. Ah, uh, terrible. You didn't like Mars Attacks. Nope. You didn't like Alice in Wonderland. Nope. Or Corpse Bride. I uh, didn't see it. Can't judge Frank it. and Weenie. Didn't see it. You didn't see Frank and Weenie? No. It's kind of cute. I'm not going to lie about movies I have or Miss Peregrine's seen. Home for Peculiar Children? No. That one uh, I didn't see. All right. Well, there you go. So you so, really don't have to go that far back. Sweeney Todd was in 2007 and Big Fish was in 2003. Yeah. So 15 years. Yeah, 2003. And then I'm going to say before that, Ed Wood. Okay. Which is fantastic. Watch Ed Wood. I love that movie. Noted. True story. Right. I like it. There you go. <laughs> true story about a story that's yeah, partially true. So it's a true story about a kind of story. Yeah, it, it's embellished. Hmm, a tall tale, perhaps. What, the, what was that voice? I don't know. I didn't like it. Perhaps. Oh yeah, so it's the better than when you go. <laughs> or, so the answer is bring Keaton back, because especially if you're doing these Elseworld movies now, why not bring him back? Make an old leathery Batman. He's still in shape. Just give him a give him a costume he could turn his head in. So he didn't have to do like the whole I mean, body turn. There's been a 
Keaton Renaissance. He did Birdman. He did Spider Man. The Founder. Oh yeah, that one too. He did that not great RoboCop remake. Did you see The Founder yet? No, I haven't. It's actually I I've, I I've enjoyed heard, it. I've heard good things. Again, can't I'm not gonna judge a thing I haven't seen. Then then go see it. Redbox that. Let's go. Uh, so much out there. Uh, well, you know. Anyway. I say bring Keaton back. Here, here. If he wants to get nuts, let him get nuts. Pip, pip. And Speaking if he wants of... to shove a bomb into a man's pant, let him do it. His pant? His just pant. his pant. A singular pant. Just one leg. Yeah. <laughs> Not the collective, just the singular. It'll still blow him up. Oh, boy. Yeah. Speaking of bringing it back, bring back some more letters. Bring it to pants. I'd love to have some letters. I'd love to do a mailbag show again. It's been a, a good couple of years since we did a mailbag show. Yeah, it's almost like because I harass people in person. Oh. Do yawn. Hey. I'd like to like do a mailbag show. That was fun. Yeah, maybe. Well, there's no maybe, but I think it would be a wonderful. I haven't planned. Maybe in January. I haven't planned it out past Christmas yet. Oh, that's a long ways away. That's like three months away. It's not that far away. There's so much coming up. It's there... like a quarter of the year left. There's all of the Halloween shows we got to do. Ooh, the scary, scary month of October. There's all of the Christmas shows Pumpkin we got to do. Pumpkin Spice Latte September. There's Jared and Zach's Five Weeks Creed of Christmas. Creed 2. Oh, that is coming out soon, isn't the it? The Star Wars Holiday Special. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, finally. Yeah. Venom. Send us some letters. And speaking of sending us things, go on over to patreon.com slash editorsnotecomics, where you can... Uh, Throw some cheddar our way. One dollar a month gets you this show a week early, and it gets you the Buffy back issue and the other show on the network a whole uh, week early. This is a day early. That's a week early. Yeah, yeah. I, did I say that correct the first time? Nope. All right. Well, now I fixed it. I'm not going to fix it in post. Yeah, all right. Uh, for a little more cheddar, you get some other cool bonus features like Zach's Top Comics of the Week. Did you remember to write it this week? No, because... I didn't have time because I wasn't working yesterday. Okay, so normally you well, get... Well, the issue, I haven't read them yet, so okay, yeah. it's hard to judge when I haven't read everything I need to read. And you still normally, you normally will get Zach's top comics of the week. I'll still get them out. It's just going to be when I've read the things that need to be read. Fair and reasonable. Zach also will uh, make you a Duke or Duchess of the podcast with a special sound effect from Sound Guy for $5 on our Patreon. It's been a while since we've had a Duke or Duchess, so we really appreciate... Uh, Give me money. Yeah, Zach's money. gonna become Zach's gonna become Microsoft Office rich. <laughs> I can't afford it. You I can't. have to use Google Docs. Google Docs is a fine program. It's the same. It's just free. Yeah. So was Open Office, by the way. Don't know that one. Yeah, I I use Open Office. Yeah, okay. Because I too am not not not, uh, <laughs> not Microsoft, Microsoft Office, Office rich. <laughs> What a sad thing to admit in a public forum. Well, you know. Like, ah, I can't afford the base software. But if you send it to me in a different format, I can read it. But I find I do a lot of my work on Google Docs because they work from multiple places on multiple computers, so it's yeah. a lot easier. I guess that's it. You're on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. But you're more importantly, uh, 210 Water Street in Hollowell. You're on all the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Bumble, Tinder, Grinder. What was Bumble the one where the women have to ask? Yeah, the first? Bumble Bumble's the one you know, where women have to ask first. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't I'm not up on my dating apps. POF, you're on POF. Plenty of fish. No idea. Oh. Okay Cupid. That's also another dating site. Uh, I'm trying to think of other dating apps and sites. I, I don't know. I'm too busy I'm, for them actually. I'm still up on match dot com. That's oh, the okay, one match. I know. Oh, there's match. I know match. that one. Com, yeah. Not because I used it, because they had a legitimate commercial. They have le yes. But no, two ten Water Street in Hollowell, all the social medias. There is parking in front of the store. You can get right right up to it through uh the big dig Hollowell. Please come right up in me. Park there. <sighs> You can't say it like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your review. <laughs> that's that's all I got. All right, we'll be back next week for that thing I promised for this week. Lied to you and then changed my mind about. Yeah, I showed up and totally <laughs> was caught off guard. James Cameron's Spider-Man script. Look, I've started it. This is not going to be another one of those Star Wars specials no. where we like promise it and never deliver. Unless like someone major dies and we have to do a thing about them. Oh, oh boy, yeah. Nobody I... die. Nobody die. Nobody die. I haven't read all of it. I've gotten a good chunk of the way through it. It's bad. How bad is it? Real bad. All right, we'll find out next week. I'll tell you all about teenage virgin weirdo spider-man okay which are things that they call a lot of attention to uh, <laughs> uh yeah all right perhaps <laughs> we'll be back for that yeah